What is up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be finishing off the Allison Mack story in relation to the Nexium cult that we've been talking about because she's finally been sentenced. And I think she's the uh, last person who's being tried here. Uh, Bronfman, Renier, and Salzman, which are the other three people, the key three people, the top people, they've already been sentenced, obviously. So Allison Mack was the la last person, as far as uh, I know. And she got three years. So in my last video, I said that the, uh, the sentencing recommendation are way too high. The sentencing recommendations said that she should be getting somewhere between 14 to 17.5 years. Uh, that's I knew that wasn't going to happen because she turned state's evidence and gave federal prosecutors evidence to take down Rainier. So that's a very, that's a very, that's something that the federal prosecutors are going to look very kindly upon and therefore they suggested that the judge go easy on her because she was one of the key, she was the key person uh, she provided a videotape of Renier uh, basically talking to her and confessing what he did to all these women when it comes to the branding so she was key she was a key person in taking down Renier so I knew that the sentences sentencing was going to be much lower than the guidelines so I my prediction was like somewhere around five years that's what I was thinking and I said in my last year last video Video, that it was gonna, probably going to be somewhere around uh, five to 10, leading heavily towards five. Um, but he ended up giving her three years. OK, so we're going to be going through some of the things that people said in court here from I'm going to show you guys some some of the things that her, the victim said. Uh, some of the victim statements were pretty, pretty bad. Um, I don't necessarily agree with them, uh, but nevertheless, they're the victim. So they know more than me and they have the right to their opinion. But um, but anyways, they they spoke and then Allison Mack also spoke and gave her side and the judge made made his ruling and gave her three years, okay? So um, uh, let me t tell you guys what the judge here said and what the victim said. When it came to DOS and the monstrous crimes he committed uh, in that organization, you were an essential accomplice, U.S. District Judge Nicholas Garifas told Mac in the courtroom, referring to the secret sisterhood, sister? <laughs> sisterhood she led in Rainier's service. Uh, Mr. Renier could not have done that without you, Garifas added. And that's true. That's true for uh, some of the victims. Uh, but like I said, she was not the top person. Um, uh, Nancy Salzman was, was the number two and the co-founder, and she's already been sentenced. Um, I didn't cover her case because it was like in 2019 or something. Um, and then also Bronfman, who was the financier, they've all, she's, also, um, she's also confessed to her crime. So Allison Mack is now the top person. She was not the one of the top lieutenants. She was a lieutenant, okay? So there's a difference. And that's one of the reasons that Garifas went easy on her. One of Mack's victims, Jessica Jones, likened Mack to another alleged sex trafficking organization during a thundering monologue in court. So this woman was going all out against uh, Mack, um, against, <laughs> against uh, Mack, and she compared her to Maxwell, which is not a fair comparison, if you ask me, just factually, but this is what she said. She is the Ghislaine Maxwell to Keith's Jeffrey Epstein. Well, that's not actually true because, like I said, Nancy Nancy Salzman was the co-founder of Nexium and the first person to help uh, Renier recruit people. So it's just factually inaccurate to say that Allison Mack was the number two when clearly Nancy Salzman, who is a convicted felon, as it says here, um, she was the one who was number two. So it's technically inaccurate. And then uh, further further down the line is uh, is Bronfman, who was also uh, who's also conf confessed. Claire Bronfman. Here we go. Claire Bronfman has also, she, uh, who was a uh, heiress to um, Seagram's, I think it was like a chocolate company or something. She's a rich heiress, and she was the one who funded this entire operation uh, or helped fund it. Um, there were many other rich people who helped uh, Rainier do all this stuff, but uh, Claire Bronfman and um, uh, Nancy Salzman were the two top lieutenants, if you want to really um, look at it that way for, uh, in a comparison to Jeffrey Epstein. Nancy Salzman is the equivalent of Ghislaine Maxwell. So I don't agree with her assertion that Ghislaine, that uh, Allison Mack is the Ghislaine Maxwell to, uh, to Keith Renier. That's just not true. But nevertheless, like I said, she's the victim, so I, I respect her opinion. And uh, and then uh, some other people spoke as well, um, and she apologized uh uh, Allison Mack apolo apologized in tears to everybody um, that she wronged here. And um, and uh, another part I want to read is the federal prosecutors. The federal prosecutors also agreed that the federal sentencing guidelines were too high. Like I said, 14 to 17.5 years, way too much. In light of the facts, uh, in, in light of the in light of Mack's contribution to the investigation and prosecution of Rainier, the main reason he's in jail, uh, serving like 40 years or whatever it is, um, is because of Mack. Mack, wearing a black dress and a floral white mask, uh, face mask, thanked prosecutors and the judge for uh, for uh 
leading her toward recovery and leading her away from her delusions. Quote, I rejected everyone who tried to tell me the truth, Max said. For her defense, for her defense attorney, Sean Buckley, the fact that Max's family, friends, and loved ones filled up the pews of the majestic ceremonial federal courtroom was evidence itself that his client was reformed. Well, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I think she is reformed. I think she made a big mistake. But the fact that her family came to the court, come on, bro, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> she uh, uh, previously rejected her family when in Renier's uh, thrall, Buckley said. that. So like I said, I, the, the fact that they were there doesn't really mean anything. A lot of guilty people have a lot of family come to court. So that's a that's an unnecessary thing to say. I'm so nitpicky, but whatever. The point is, I f personally, I, do, I don't think she's ever going to do anything like this. Uh, and I think inside, she's a genuinely good person who got caught up in this horrible man's uh, grip. Like, like I said, it happens all the time in Hollywood. People get caught up in Scientology, which Scientology is a criminal organization, if you ask me. And they're doing horrible things to people every single uh, every single day. And uh, um, and like siphoning money off all these rich actors to uh, fund their grift. So um, if, if there's any organization you should be going after, it's Scientology and their criminality. But nevertheless, they're a religion. Uh, so they so, you know, federal prosecutors can't really do anything. It's it's a they should be doing a RICO. Uh, they should be trying to get them on a RICO statute. I'm sure they can find some evidence on that. But that's a different story. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Um some people were very unhappy about the fact that she got this light sentence. I am not one of them. If I was the if I was the judge, I would have probably given her given her like two or three years. But um, but five years I didn't think was unreasonable because she did hurt people. So you can't like just because uh, just because you might feel sorry for her or you don't think she's uh, as bad as people say doesn't mean that she gets to get off uh, clean, right? She still did something wrong and people suffered because of it. So believing in law and order means like if you're I'm I'm somebody who actually believes in law and order. I'm not a partisan hack in any way. Way. I don't care if I like you, dislike you, what party you are, what political persuasion you are. If you committed a crime, you have to pay for it. That's my belief. That's why I have law and order floating on top of my head, because I actually believe in it. Not from any Republican or Democrat point of view, but from a justice perspective. OK, so personally, um, she's an actress that I like, but nevertheless, she did something wrong. So she has to go to jail. That's how it works. OK, you have to pay your debt to society. That's how it works in order for us to have a proper uh, functioning society. All right, guys. Um, so that's about it. Um, I think justice was served in this case. Uh, everybody's gone to jail. Ranier, Salzman, Bronfman, and now Allison Mack is also gone. So I think justice has been properly served in this case. That's my opinion. You can agree or disagree. And uh, yeah, that's all I, that's all I got to say for this video. It's pretty uh, short, um, although it's seven minutes already. Um, so make sure to like the video if you liked it and let me know what you think below. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, press all and share the uh, share this video with somebody you think might find it helpful. With that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. As always, peace.